Huh? You got to go out and give it away. <laughs> Thank you, Master, for your mercies and grace and faithfulness. You know, I've shared a while ago about visions that I've had. And, uh, and we're hearing more and more things of what's going on. You know, we, everybody knows we're in a time of season where corruption is being exposed, regardless of where you are and what's happening. Amen? The political arena, the governments, and all the other stuff, it's not in here, it's globally. The corruption, the child smuggling, and murderings, and lies, and deceits, and fake presidents, fake news. We've got fake everything, you know? In fact, this realm is fake. It's, it's going away soon, and we're going home to the real one. Amen. <laughs> but in that, a while ago, a couple years ago, I saw three winds coming, and I'm going to share this again. The first wind that came, it was like peeling back. It was knocking over roofs. It was opening. It was looking into everything that can be looked into. It was exposing. I always looked at it as opening a sardine can. You know, it couldn't hide. And once it was exposed, it smelled, you know. And so in this, there's the first one that's been coming, and it's still going. It will continue to move and go and go and go until Jesus comes. The second wind came and began to drop strategy, provision, weaponry. We are in the second wind while the first wind is still exposing. Then the third wind came and took the body of Christ home. And there were many left behind. Many. People who thought they were good, they were left behind. People thought that they knew God, were left behind. Many were disappointed, and they had to go through tribulation. See, because in this, it's not about being good. It's about having a relationship and being right with God Almighty. One of the things that the Spirit said to me this morning, he said, and he's looking. Now, let me tell you that while we were worshiping, I saw oil flowing in here. And then all of a sudden, and it had ignited and went, and it went up. And I'm telling you, heaven saw the worship here today. They saw the worship. The angels gathered. They saw the worship. One of the things we want to do is get attention. We want to get God's attention all the time. Amen? And so as your personal worship goes forth, you have to ask yourself, did I get God's attention today? Amen? You know, he's not looking at works. And everything that he wants is your heart. He just wants you. <laughs> and he, see, religion has been contaminated in the area, and people in faith have become contaminated because they, they go about that their works. But works without faith is nothing. Amen? So we are worshipers. We must be lovers of his presence. Always. When we were in the world and searching those things that brought us false fulfillments, it's because we are missing the presence of God. I'm telling you, the problem with every individual when they're going through stuff is because of the lack of God's presence. That's what it is. Always, and will always be the lack of God's presence. And His presence is the, the only thing that fulfills us. People do make wrong choices without the presence of God. Amen? It's His presence. And in his presence is truth. In his presence is healing. In his presence is everything. You have his presence, you have everything. You don't have to be concerned about nothing. Everything's coming. And we're on a time and season right now where things seem to be glo gloomy. The word is fulfilling. Prophecies are being fulfilled. We still have a president, Donald Trump. The other one's an imitation. He was not elected by this country. Amen? He was put in to bring down this country. Everybody knows it. If that, nobody knows it, they're pretty stupid. Everybody must see it. The only ones that still don't understand it are ones that are still veiled. Most of them are still wearing masks. 
But in this, because they're blinded by the powers of darkness. They're blinded. They're short-sighted. They can't see through. They're not seekers of truth or lovers of God's presence. And God is telling us, look it. He, in the second wind, something is about to happen. We're close than we've ever, never been close before. There's about a release of provision. There's about a transfer of anointing, uh, uh, from an gr increase of anointing. There's about a transfer of wealth. Now, wealth comes in multiple ways. It can become in great wisdom. It can come in strategy. It can come in inventions. It can come in multiple ways. Amen? There was an individual that is well-respected and was sharing a vision that they had. And they were driving in this vision. And while they were driving, they were driving by billboards. And each billboard lit up with a, a word. And it, it was revealing transfer. Transfer. And, and, it, was in the, and it was saying wealth the wealth, and it was lit up with gold and bright. And it would go by, and then down it would go to the next one. And it would say, transfer. Wealth, transfer. And it would continue, and as they were driving, they'd come up to another one. And it said, wicked, but the wicked one was dark. It wasn't lit. And they kept going, going, and going, and another one there was no light, no sign. Another one, no light, no sign. Another one, no light, no sign. Another one, no light, no sign. And then another one came, and it lit up, and it said, transferred. See, we are in the, we're passing by those billboards now that are not lit. But we're going to end up with the one that says transferred. Because it must come to support the greatest harvest in the history of mankind. Amen? It must come. It is a promise from Dad. But it's going to come to individuals that are worshipers. Because in the presence of God, the enemy can't steal. And God is not going to release something that he knows is going to be stolen. Does everybody understand? Look at this. Go to John chapter 4. Hallelujah. In the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 17. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? And Jesus went to, he was at a Jacob's well. And he stopped there, and of course there was a woman there getting a drink. And uh, he offered her, uh, she, he, he offered her an eternal drink. She didn't understand what was happening. So Jesus read her dirty laundry and exposed her and shared with her about, you know, sleeping with guys and not having husbands and this, that, and whatever. And in verse 17, and a woman answered and said to him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you're shacking up with right now is not even your husband, basically. Hello? And, and he's not your husband, and in that you spoke truly. And a woman said to Jesus, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet, because he read her dirty laundry. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, woman, 
believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. For you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. For God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So what are we doing? We're worshiping him in spirit and truth in his presence and his word. Now, Father is seeking to release those who are lovers of his presence. This is going to be the difference. And this is what occurred when this person had the vision. She said there was Christians sitting there in front of the final billboard, which said transferred. And the ones that were getting it were not the ones that were seeking it. They were worshiping the Lord, seeking the Lord. They weren't seeking his hand. They were seeking his presence. Those are the ones that were getting it. The other ones were looking at the others going, why are you getting it and we're not? Because they're seekers of his hand and not his presence. His presence is everything. And it should be everything to every believer. If they're truly a believer, it should be everything. When the door opens, you should be in assembly. His presence should be number one to every single one of us, no matter where we are. You can't buy his presence with cash. You buy his presence with praise and worship. That means you must deny yourself. His presence must be everything, no matter what's going on. You must get fulfilled from his presence. And you must be a seeker and lover of his presence. Or you're going to miss what's coming. Amen? In John 14. It's worship in spirit and truth. And that's the title, Spirit and Truth. And you can always make your own title, you know. <laughs> like lovers of his presence. Hallelujah. John 14, verse 16. And Jesus said, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you, what? Forever. The spirit of what? Truth. Whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. The helper from the eternal realm to help the offspring of Christ in the temporary realm. He's come to help us. See, the worldly ones are blinded by deceit and they can't receive the helper. The helper's not available because they're still servants of darkness and not knowing it. Now let me share something with you. A person may be called a Christian and say that they believe, but if the word believe means to follow. So if they're not followers, God says they're liars. And remember that the spirit never goes ahead of the blood. The blood always goes before the spirit. So that means that there must be repentance. So there must be humility and humbleness. So as you and I repent for everything, anything that we've done doesn't mean we're perfect. We're going to make mistakes. But we don't hold on to them. Don't justify them. Don't sweep them under the rug. Because they'll bite you. You put it under the blood with repentance. Now the Spirit has access to remove, to bring deliverance, to bring healing. Amen. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that's the desire we all want is to be free. Number one is free from ourselves. Free from our past. Free. To be free in the spirit. Free to worship. Free to dance. We're not bound by religious acts. We want to be bound by God's presence. And when you're bound by God's presence, you have everything. 
And I'm telling you, something is about to be released. John 16. But you got to be careful what you're touching and agreeing with. You got to be careful. You got to examine yourself. What's my intentions? What's my motive? Am I about my father's business? Or am I about my business? What's the priority? Kingdom business first always. John 16, 12. And Jesus said, I still got a lot of things to tell you. But you cannot bear them now. In other words, you're not going to understand them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he's going to be able to interpret for you. He's going to tell you. He will guide you into all truth. So why aren't people knowing the truth? Because they're not filled with the spirit. Amen. They lack God's presence or they have the truth. They would know the truth, wouldn't they? But they don't know the truth. They're not our seekers of God's presence or lovers of God's presence or seekers of the truth. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he, hear, he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He can tell you things to come through vision, dreams, revelation, prophecies, gifts of the Spirit, word of knowledge. Verse 14, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. He is the spirit of truth who will guide to all truth. He will assist in maintaining our salvation and the position. He is for us and not against us. You know, he positions us to receive things, too, like time-release messages, time-release provision. These are God's time-release events that he has pre-appointed for me and you. There's time-release strategy, weapons, wealth, inventions, healings, mysteries of revelations, prophecies, time-release warning, amen, and preparation. But they come to those who are filled with the Spirit, led by the Spirit, and are lovers of the, His presence. That's how they come. Anybody can have a revelation through the carnal or through the soul. But there's a difference revelation that comes by the Spirit. Because when revelation comes through the Spirit, it humbles. Anything else promotes pride. Amen? In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Spirit and truth. All right. Second Thessalonians, verse 13. Let's speak it together now that we're all there. <laughs> but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through what? Sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Salvation through sanctification by the Spirit of truth. Again, the Holy Spirit helps us maintain our salvation. And there is a doctrine that is incorrect. It's not the doctrine of my Father. Once saved, always saved. Anybody can give up their salvation anytime they want. In fact, many people have sold their souls to be fame, rich and famous. They were once Christians and they turned away from God. The Lord says, I have no pleasure in that. And anyone who thinks that they're going to go out and serve the devil and make it into the kingdom of God is, is an idiot. They are blinded and deceived. Amen. The Lord says, grab hold of him and he'll grab hold of you. 
who you serve when you die is where you go. But God has the last say, doesn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. So we see salvation through sanctification. That's separation unto God by the spirit of truth. We're to stand fast and hold to his presence and to his words of promise as end time worshiper, worshipers of his presence and of his words. We worship those. Every word that comes from him is a command. It's not a maybe or if. It's a command. In 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. I want you to know that in everyone that is in this room today, while you were worshiping, the Lord had sent out angels to do something for your life. I don't know what it is, but he wanted me to release that. Through your worship, the level of your worship was a level of release. I'm going to say it again. The level of your worship was the level of your release. Everyone in this room today, he's releasing something. I don't know where. I don't know what. But there's something that he's moving on your behalf right now. And even while you're sitting here right now, there have been angels dispatched on your behalf to get something completed, accomplished. And you will know about it. I don't know when, but you will know about it. Does everybody got it? Can you grab hold to it? Praise God. First John chapter 4, verse 4. When it happens, when, it's re when, you, when you recognize it, see what's going to happen, there will be a quickening of the Spirit, and He'll remind you, that's it. That's it. And you'll go, whoa. It'll be a whoa moment. Not a whoa, W-O-E. It'll be a W-O, it'll be a wow moment. Yeah. It won't be a whoa moment. It'll be a wow moment. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Snap! Verse 4. First John chapter 4, 4. Let's speak it. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error or deceit. Everyone say deceit. Amen. It's called deception, isn't it? There is a spirit of truth and there is a spirit of deceit. We overcome the powers of darkness with deception because we are lovers of his presence and lovers of his words. That's why we must love truth. You cannot compromise truth. You must be a lover of his truth. You know, Jesus said man cannot live by bread alone, but what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Well, first you need to get to God, then you can come out of his mouth. Amen? So you need to get in God's presence. See, people just think that reading the Word of God is going to do it. No, it must be backed by the Spirit of God. There must be, why? Because look at who wrote the Bible, this Holy Spirit, right? So you want to know the author, right? So you can interpret things correctly. Jesus even said, you know, uh, you search the Scriptures thinking you have eternal life. He told them that. He told the Pharisees and Sadducees that. You search the Scriptures think you got life. But you won't come to me. In other words, get in my presence so that you can get life. There's a difference. Those that are filled with the presence of God, those that are lovers of his presence, those that are worshipers, there's a separation. There's a difference. And you will know them by their fruits. Amen? Because they talk about God's presence. Hallelujah. Psalm 111. the Spirit trying to get to us today? He's trying to encourage us to press on. He's trying to encourage us to don't give up. He's trying to tell us, listen, don't go by how you feel. Cut the feeling. Because there's great reward. How many of you know God rewards those who endure, who seek? Amen? 
Don't give up. Psalm 11, 111. Psalm 111, starting at verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's, uh, uh, let's sing it. No. <laughs> praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with part of my heart. With my what? Whole heart. You know, that's, look, that's how you get his attention. And you just don't come in and sing a song and then go, okay, I'm done. You ain't done nothing. You didn't even come out of the outer court yet. You're still in the outer court. All right, verse 1. Let's do this one again. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Ooh, the works of the Lord are what? Great study by all who have pleasure in them. His word is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He's given food to those who reverence him, fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. Praise the, whole, praise the Lord with all of your heart, not partial. Amen? Go after him. Make it to where it's a matter of life and death. And when you begin to do that, you t it turns to love. Man, you want to just tell him, oh, man, I want to worship. Man, I just can't help it. I want to worship. I want to love you. I want to express your love. Man, I love worshiping the Lord. And I know mostly everybody here does. You know? We're lovers of his presence. And Psalm 119. <laughs> Glory to God. In verse 1, Blessed are the what? Undefiled in a way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies who what? Seek him with the whole heart. They, always, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I looked into your commandments. I will praise you with the what? Uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. And oh, do not forsake me utterly. Again, what's he saying? He said, look it. I'm going to seek you with all my heart. I'm going to obey you. Amen. I'm going to seek, watch, grope over you. I'm looking for you. Every day we should be looking for the Lord. You don't know how he's going to show up somewhere. You never know what's going to happen. He shows up in multiple ways. Many people have fed someone or took some, something to someone and didn't realize, and all of a sudden that person disappeared. The Word tells us you never know when you're going to entertain angels or the Lord. And Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3 and verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is what? Safe. Verse 2. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcise the eighth day the stock of Israel, a tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ, for the anointing. Does everybody see that? So Paul became a worshiper. He realized that everything wasn't worth what he used to be. Mr. Pride, Mr. Circumcision, Mr. Holy, but he wasn't holy. 
In fact, he thought he was killing for God. Saul, who became Paul, even God changed his name. You know, when you are born again of the Spirit, there's something that happens. You want more. You want to know more. You want to understand them more. And then what happens is you stay connected into God's presence. You maintain a hunger and thirst. And by maintaining that hunger and thirst for righteousness, you are filled. See, it's our responsibility to go after God. He already came after us. Amen. He ripped the veil. He paid the price. He went to hell, rose again, and then sent his spirit for me and you. Now it's our responsibility to go after him. Amen. We're to be seeking him and groping for him. Amen. So here we are. We're worshiping God in spirit, rejoice in Christ, and no confidence in your flesh. Let me tell you, when you are in the presence of God enough, you will hate your flesh. You can't stand it. And you know when you're in the flesh. And sometimes God allows you to go in the flesh to see what you're going to do. You go, Lord, where are you? What happened to me? Come on, man. All right, I'm going home. Let me tell you, when you're in the flesh, shut up. Don't say a word. Yeah, Amen. Because there's going to th you're thinking crazy. You're going. You want to say things. You're irritated, and you're irritating everybody else. So don't say nothing. Wait till you get refreshed, refilled, and reunited. Get home. Get in your car. Lock the door so you can't get out. And nobody can get in. Turn on the praise and worship and get filled. Amen. Because the problem is the lack of presence, which is the problem with everybody. The world and believers and unbelievers. It's the lack of the presence of God. It's not the lack of the Word of God. It's the lack of the presence of God. Because there's a lot of people who have the Word of God. And they're still acting like heathens. What does the Word say? The letter kills. And the Spirit brings life. The letter will kill you if you ain't filled. Because you can't obey it. Hallelujah. Romans 1. Wherever you go, if the worship is not at the level it should be, don't go. Amen? Don't go. Unless they give you access to all the music, you know. Then you can change things around. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know for some people, it's, you know, there's, there's places where they just, you know, get CDs, lock yourself up, you know, hallelujah. Get down to get up. Worship till you drop. Romans 1, 18. You know, that is going to be the major separation between in the body. Those that worship and those that don't. There are places you can go in, you can do three songs, sit down and hear a word and then go home. They've never crossed over. Never crossed. Some believe, there will be people that are Christians for 30 and 40 years, they've never crossed over in their life into that presence and glory of God. See, that's where you change. <laughs> and that's what the enemy prevents. He's, I mean, he did it with all of this fake flu and viruses and whatever. Cause churches to shut down. Not us, but praise God. Because we know better. Didn't mean people didn't get sick with the flu. Who cares? God's a healer. Amen? If you felt sick, stay home. When you get better, come on. It's that simple. And you don't have to wear a mask, gloves, or look like Darth Vader. Still amazing me. People are driving around with rubber gloves on while they're in the car and masks on. Look, look, they're going to surgery. It's fear. Amen? It's stinking fear. Verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. 
because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became what? Fools or foolish. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. We see that happen now. This is what's going on. We see it all over the place. They exchange the truth and the spirit of God for lies and worship of self, creator, and money, fame, and fortune, power, and authority. They've become offsprings of the devil, walked away from Christ, many of them, thinking that they can come back. I hope they come back before they give their last breath. Amen? Matthew 25. These individuals will receive the wrath of God and judgment unless they repent and turn from their ways. In verse 1, let's speak it. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be like in the ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And we know these are Christians because they've been washed by the blood. That's why they're virgins. For five of them were wise and five were foolish. That means they were deceived. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Hello, why? Lack of God's presence. Fire doesn't burn without fuel. Amen? But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out too late. Listen, you cannot share your oil with another individual. You must purchase it yourself by your worship. Verse 9, But the wise answered and said, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to go by, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut, and afterward the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. <laughs> but he answered and said to him, Surely I say, I do not know you. I don't know you. Why? No crossover. Does everybody get it? No crossover. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. There were the foolish and the wise Christians refused to assemble and worship, and others acknowledged. Why? Because worshiped, they fell in from a worship of God's presence to a worship of self. They spent more time doing work and building their own empire, thinking that it was okay. Well, I know the Lord. I know the Lord, and the Lord knows you. Amen? But when it finally came to the end, he said, I don't know you. Why? Because you've not crossed over into my presence enough. You've built a distance from me now. See, there's no long distance relationship in God. Amen? No long distance. It's like people writing a letter back and forth. You can read other people's letters until you finally meet that person. Once that presence of that person is in your presence, things change. You'll know them by their fruit. you know what's what. you know their heart. you know their character. Amen? The more you hang with someone, the more you know that, what they're like. And eventually, you're going to either depart. And, you know, it's a tough thing when people are married and, one, and both of them are heathens and one gets saved. 
That's a tough thing. But God says that the heathen part is sanctified by the righteous one and hope that that person comes in. Amen? But so many people are unevenly yoked, and it's a difficult thing. That's why God says, wait. Wait. Trust, rest, and wait. Never marry someone that's not at the same level, I want to say. Amen? Or doesn't have the same heart after God. It's not about knowledge. Well, someone might know more than others. Amen? They might have more knowledge of the Lord than they might know the Bible more. But it's where the heart's at. Hey, David, King David blew it. He even became peeping David, remember? But he was a man after God's heart. No matter what he did, he blew it a lot, man. Committed murder, everything. I'm not saying go out and commit murder and be after God's heart, you know. You'd be after his heart in jail, that's for sure. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 8. Hallelujah. The key is worship. The key is God's presence. You know, think about where we used to be. <laughs> I won't repeat that again of all that stuff that I said last week, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> but we used to be worshipers of the ground, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> worshipers of everything but God. But now look at, man, I, I, I can look around the room for a minute and just see everybody. I knew where everybody's been at one place, and all of a sudden, man, they're seeking God, lovers of God's presence. That is so wonderful. That is so wonderful. And it helps encourage everyone else, man. Just get in God's presence and let go. You know, when you cross over, everything goes. You don't have a care in the world. Nothing. Once you cross over, it's over with. You don't want to come back. Jeremiah 8, 4. Let's go. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Moreover, you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, Will they fall and not rise? Will one turn away and not return? Why has this people slidden back? Jerusalem is in a perpetual backsliding. They hold fast to what? Deceit or what? Deception. Look at how many people are, are holding to the... Uh, a belief system or flawed belief system that is deceiving and deceptive and still holding on to it and won't allow God to cut it loose. They refused to return, he says. I listened and I heard, but they did not speak aright. No man repented for his wickedness, saying, what have I done? They don't even know what they've done. Everyone turned to his own course as a horse rushes into the battle. I like this part. Even the stork in the heavens know their appointed times. That's, I mean, that's the cotton, you know. And the turtle dove and the swift and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. How can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Look, the false pen of the scribe certainly works falsehood. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom do they have? Therefore, I will give their wives to others. That's called divorce. Their fields to those who will inherit them. They will lose their land in, in poverty, bankruptcy. Because from the least of them to the greatest, everyone is given to covetousness. From the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals what? Falsely. They hold fast to deceit. They put themselves in a continuously backsliding condition. What are you, deceptions, doctrines of demons, amen, promoted by men, lies and deceit. Look at what's coming out every single day, out of the radio, out of the news, out of all of this. Everything is nothing but deceit, corruptible seeds. We have to be careful. People you run into, hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. What, I can't hear you. You want to remove that mask? Oh, okay. Oh, I mean, you know, when people see each other, most of the time, they're always talking about, are you busy? Oh, I'm busy. Oh, you busy? 
You're busy. Busy doing what? I'm busy. I'm busy working. I'm busy doing this. I'm busy doing that. They always, are you busy? I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm a carrier of God's presence. Amen? I'm about my Father's business. We need to get the word busy out. It's buzzy. You're going to get stung by that enough. Psalm 49. Hallelujah. Almost done. Psalm 49. You don't hear people, too, too many of them say, I'm lazy. Hey, what are you doing? I'm lazy. Or say, I'm deceived. But you'll hear them say, I'm sick. Or whatever. Psalm 49, verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Hear this, all peoples. Give ear, all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will disclose my dark saying on the harp. Why should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of, at, at my heels surrounds me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly, and it shall cease forever, that he should, that he should continue to live eternally and not see the what? The pit. For he sees wise men die, likewise the fool and the senseless person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Their inner thought is that their houses will last forever, their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man, though in honor, does not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the way of those who are foolish. And their prosperity who approve their sayings. Like sheep they are laid in the grave, death shall feed on them. The upright shall have dominion over them in the, in the morning, and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave, far from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, and he shall what? Receive me. Praise God. The ways of the foolish that hold to the traditions of men and deceit, refusing to worship in the spirit and truth, no power, no voice, no guidance, no strategy, and no provision. Does everybody understand the importance of God's presence? It's everything. Remember when Saul, King Saul, when the Lord called King Saul, amen? Well, the first thing he do, he said, look at man, you ain't right. You can't serve me the way you are now. You're going to have to go with the prophets, amen? You're going to have to go to the high places, and you're going to go worship the Lord. You're going to come and worship at the Lord there. And when God's presence comes on you, you will prophesy with the others and your heart will turn. It will change. See, there's a heart change every time you get into God's presence. Why? Because how many times do you think you know something? And you realize later you were wrong. Gosh, man. I could have bet my life on that. Good thing I didn't. But when you got, in, got into God's presence, whew, things changed. It's like it was revealed. Snap. I was wrong there. Gosh, Lord, I'm sorry for being wrong. What an opportunity to repent. Why? Because the longer you wait, the more you reap. The quicker you repent, the less you reap. Amen? So that's why it's so important. You get into God's presence as much as you can. Don't let nothing interfere with it. Psalm 37. Glory. Let 
verse 1. Psalm 37, verse 1. Let's speak it. Do not fret because of evil doers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they soon shall be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his. Is his promises faithful? Is his word faithful? So we're to be feeding on those. Amen. Delight yourself also in the Lord or in his presence, and he shall give you the desires of your heart, because there's been a heart exchange in the presence. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he'll bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as a light and your justice as a noonday. Rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him. And do not fret because of him who prospers in his ways, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evildoers will be what? Cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. So we know God's got the last say. Amen. And we're going to watch the cutoff here shortly. But you're going to be seeing the transfer. You're going to see a lot of things change. Believe me, the military is getting ready to act. Wish they would have acted already, but they haven't yet. But it's not my plan, it's his plan. Because if I was God, things would be different. That's why he didn't put me in charge. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we want to feed on his words of promise, their truth, and delight in his presence through worship in his spirit. The words of his promise become our life. Amen? And I want to close at Matthew 6. Spirit and truth, because we're lovers of his presence. Matthew 6, 31. How I many you know worry is fear? And fear is worry. When there's worry and fear involved, people become anxious. They're all brothers and sisters in that, you know. It's a family right there. It's a fear factor. When people become anxious, why do people become anxious and move? Because the enemy's coming at them to move them out of position because God's getting ready to do something. When God sees them out of position, he has to hold it back, and that person has to wait, wait, wait until it comes around again. But the, the reason why that occurred is because of lack of presence. Listen, everybody's answer is God's presence. Everybody's answer is God's presence. It's, it's Jesus. Man, when you lift the name of Jesus up, man, he shows up. God, that's the answer to everything. Healing, prosperity, counsel, correction, and direction. He is the answer to everything. God's presence. Please don't lose that. Matthew 6, 31. Therefore, worry about everything. Right? Oh. Therefore, do not what? Worry, saying, what shall we eat? <laughs> what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Does he know? Well, if you were in his presence enough, you'd know he knows. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. What's your answer to everything? God's presence. Worship. Worship, worship, worship. That's what it's all about. Amen? Without his presence, we're nothing. And without his presence... His word is nothing but seed. We want the sword. Amen. We want to be armed and dangerous. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We are honored and blessed. As that you seal the word that's been imparted with the blood of Christ and the anointing. And that you bring to remembrance through the Holy Spirit that our answer of everything is in your presence. <laughs>